Good morning and welcome to the corner of Walsham and Midcrown. It's great to hear the buzz going on in the sanctuary. If you're joining us online, a very special welcome to you as well. If you are in the area and happen to hear uh, this podcast and can get by here, we have our 9 o'clock service will be starting in about uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Uh, you got a little bit of time. Uh, feel free to come in and join us. It is Communion Sunday. I announced that so that everyone that's on home at home can remember to grab your communion elements, but also so that you here in the sanctuary can remember that in the United Methodist Church, communion is always open. Everyone is invited. If you are here present, you are invited to the table. Welcome back to our choir. Uh, it's good to see you all back. All healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? Okay, just, just checking those top three. All right. Uh, it is, if you want to be a part of our choir, it's a great time to start that. Uh, we are glad to have them back. It's also our Educator Blessing Sunday, so if you are an educator, either have been, past, present, uh, private school, public school, or one of our Sunday school teachers, there will be an opportunity for a blessing a little bit later on in the day. So I just kind of warn you, uh, I'll be inviting you to stand where you are for a brief blessing. Uh, the young people will be invited to come forward. If you brought your backpacks, you can raise them up a little bit later. I want to see them, uh, but you don't need to bring them forward. What we have is a tag, backpack tag for you, uh, so that you can put that on your backpack to remind you of our blessing. Also want to remind you that if you are interested in continuing your theological or your biblical education, our Disciple Bible Study classes are forming now. So please indicate, there's some forms out there in the gathering place, if you'll just indicate what disciple, or, or just that you're interested in, I will call you or write you to find out the details but there's a place on there that you can indicate what disciple classes you're interested in and what days of the week work best for you. Also, you'll notice out in the gathering place that uh, the columbarium is finished. So thank you, John Mays, for putting that together. Very attractive, uh, and it's not uh, fully occupied yet, so that's great. Uh, no rush, no rush, but you might want to make your reservations, but uh, immediate occupancy is not required. Also, thank you, Kelly Kilpatrick, for being part of our worship service today. Uh, she's going to be gracing us with her flute. Thank you, Pat, for checking in on our text in church, 210-817-7007, text the word worship, and that lets us know you're here. If you'd like more information about the church, you can text the word welcome, and that in indicates another thread. And then also, if you want to text the word disciple, that's another way you can let us know about disciple. The Women in Faith and United Methodist Men luncheon is today after the 11 o'clock worship service, so if you have that on your calendar, just a brief reminder about that. And then, let's see, I had something else. I think that may be it. That may be it. I think that's enough for today. I want to welcome Kristen Wendell. Uh, she joined our church last week, and so I need to get a picture, and we'll get all that information out. I don't think I see Kristen here today, uh, so maybe she's coming to the 11 o'clock service, but we want to welcome her. Keep in your prayers. If you have prayer concerns, joy celebrations, uh, there's a green slip in back of the pew in front of you. Uh, please feel free to lift those up. Uh, keep uh, the Dorothy Cherry family in your prayers this week. Dorothy passed away this week. She would have been 102 in September. Uh, also keep uh, Bill Spacey. He's been worshiping with us and visiting with us, but also worshiping with us online as he is in his uh, he is nearing the end, let's put it that way. I, I believe he's in hospice. But Bob Barnes, many of you know, have known Bob for many years. He is in hospice and is coming to the final days of his times in hospice. So please keep Bob and Maureen in your prayers. And then we prayed for Pete Severin's wife a couple of weeks ago. Well, Pete died uh, just this other day. Many of you work out with him, and so there's been prayer requests for him as well. So many prayer requests, uh, many joys and celebrations as we celebrate going back to school and we celebrate our educators. We also are reminded of the cycle of life, uh, that we come in and we begin our, from day one preparing for the days when our time here is over. One of the ways that we do that is by supporting and loving one another, and we do that through our mission moment. So I'm going to invite uh, Tim to share us with us a little bit about our missions. Welcome to SAM Ministries' flagship program, our Transitional Living and Learning Center. And thank you for taking the time to learn more about how our programs transform lives and set our struggling neighbors on a path to self-sufficiency. SAM Ministries' programs address the need at every stage of where an individual or family may seek help to maintain or regain housing. 
Homeless prevention allows us to stop the cycle of homelessness before it starts by intervening with rent or utility assistance. Rapid rehousing places individuals and families experiencing homelessness into sustainable housing. And permanent supportive housing provides long-term care for those with disabilities. A return to our roots allows us to engage the unsheltered through street outreach and emergency shelter. And finally, our transitional housing program, one of our most comprehensive, is designed to help homeless families gain the skills and tools needed to be independent for the long term. The Transitional Living and Learning Center, or TLLC, houses 40 families for up to two years. Parents in this program attend weekly life skills classes to gain computer skills, financial literacy tools, parenting tips, nutrition knowledge, and more as they balance work-life challenges, parent children, and move their families towards stability. For your support of this ministry. And Debbie, now if you'll lead us in this holy space with your gift of music. I invite the congregation to please rise for our call to worship led by Paul Furman, followed by our hymn of praise, How Firm a Foundation. Good morning. Calling all children of the living God, the gospel is good news for every age and every stage. Let us worship together, the young and old. The good news is proclaimed in God's words and also with crayons, silly songs, snacks, and rest time. Let us worship together every generation. We come together with different abilities and disabilities, learning in a rainbow of ways and styles. Let us worship together with our family of faith. All are welcome in the arms of Christ, who proclaimed, let the children come. Let us worship together, united in our eternal hope.
I invite you now to join with me in our prayer of confession, followed by a brief moment of silence and then the assurance of God's forgiveness and grace. Let us pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now as the forgiven people of God, because we are forgiven, we can forgive. Because we forgive, we are forgiven. Let us offer each other signs of God's grace and forgiveness. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Amen. So if you are not an educator, I invite you to be seated. If you have been an educator, are an educator, have taught Sunday school, thought about teaching Sunday school, would like for somebody to ask you to teach Sunday <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, yes. Please be seated. God, our teacher who helps us to understand the world around us, thank you for educators. You have blessed our communities with educators of all shapes and size who take new skills and concepts and share them with others. God, you came to us as a child to show us what it means to be fully human, to show us how to be children. Children of God, children of your creation. You have given our children minds that grow and develop in unique ways at unique speeds, and we are astounded by that miracle. And we give you thanks and ask your blessing upon these teachers that they may continue to feel your presence and your power and your guidance. You speak to us through the words, actions, play, and feelings of children of all sizes and ages. You call us to listen to the Spirit speaking to us through your children in Christ. So help us as we celebrate the beginning of this school and academic year. We ask your blessing upon children and educators and their families. But in the midst of this celebration of education and learning, keep us ever mindful of the struggles of the teachers. Remind us that there are children and families and teachers who do not have the resources they need. When our systems fail and are unjust, the outcomes are unacceptable. When we do not equip and support our teachers, when we do not provide resources for our children, we fall short. We rob ourselves of our future. Today we remember those who are beginning this school year, those who have what they need to learn and grow in safety and those who lack supplies. We pray for the teachers. We pray for safe buildings. We pray for accommodations for all needs and abilities. We come together to worship together, to lift our young people and all those who care for them, who teach them, and we open our hearts to what you are saying to us this day. In your holy name we pray. And hear us as together we pray and you pray with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
So let's see if our students are as shy as our educators. How many of you here are students of any level in school now? Please stand or raise your hand. All right, I got a few shy ones, but most of them. Hi, Miss Luna. So did you bring your backpacks? How many of you brought your backpacks? Luna, did you bring your... Let's see. I see your backpack. All right, you brought your backpacks. Hold them up. Did y'all bring your backpacks? There you go. Fantastic. Fantastic. So glad you did. How do you feel about going back to school? Luna's excited. You excited? How many of you are excited? How many of you are a little nervous? How many of you are going to meet new people? How many of you are just a little scared? Yeah. Well, thanks for being honest. You can be seated. So going back to school always brings big feelings. And those feelings can be different from moment to moment, from person to person, from hour to hour, from day to day. And so regardless of whether you're starting school for the very first time or maybe you're moving to a new school or starting in a new school or maybe you've changed cities or maybe you're staying in the same school with the same students that you've seen every day last year. Those feelings that you have are real and they're okay. You can feel happy. You can feel nervous. You can feel curious. You can feel scared. You can feel excited all at the same time, and that's okay. But I want you to know that God's always with you, regardless of what you're feeling, regardless of where you're going, regardless of who you see, no matter what you feel, God is with you. So Don's brought some backpack tags, and so as you start your new year, we want to give you this backpack tag so that when you look at it, if you're excited, that's great. If you're scared, that's great. Wherever you are, or if you just got a homework assignment that you're really dreading, remember that God loves you, that we love you, and that God is always with you no matter what. Thanks be to God. So if the young people will come forward and pick up a backpack tag from Miss Dawn. There you go. Your mom and dad need one too. Yeah. I invite the congregation now to stand as you are able as we go back to the basics as we affirm our faith using the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. It's numbered 881 in our hymnal if you'd like to follow along there. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Be seated, and Paul, if you'd pray for us. God of love and grace, we bring our offerings this day and ask that they might be dedicated to strengthening your church for the making of disciples for Jesus Christ. 
your prophet Isaiah reminds us that offering money or possessions is not enough. Isaiah proclaims to the Israelites that unless their offerings are accompanied by a willingness to learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the willow, widow, the offerings are futile. Open our ears to hear what pleases you and open our eyes to see the opportunities all around us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. 
if you'd lead us in our prayer of illumination. Please join with me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. We are indeed so richly blessed. I very much enjoyed the ensembles and special music all the way through the month of July. Uh, here we are in August. It, it is so nice to have you back, choir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm reading this morning as we continue to make our way through the Gospel of Luke. We've skipped a few verses. Uh, I'll come now to the 32nd verse of the 12th chapter. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them, so blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, friends. If you have your backpack with you, I would like for you to bring it to me, to sit with me this morning. Will you come to me? If you have your backpack, will you bring it with you? <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's very fun. Everyone's coming back from holiday. So I'm curious what's in your backpack. Nothing? Oh, no. We're not ready. There's nothing in your backpack? You have some fruit in your backpack. That sounds great. Okay, so tell me uh, when you start school, what will be in your backpack? I know, but what will be in there? When you head to school... A lunch box. What is it? What is a school supply? A journal. A journal. A pencil. A pencil. What else? What else will be in there? A water bottle. Colored pencils. Crayons. Well, Miss Gracita actually has a backpack, but my backpack is very boring. It just has a journal and a computer. So I brought my real backpack. This is my real backpack. And I thought we should see what was in my backpack. Do you want to see? Let's see. There's some crayons. You never know when you might need those. Um, you know what this is? This is blessing is balm. Nope, blessing balm. It only gets used. Sometimes I run into kiddos who need special blessings. This is blessing balm. Um, let's see. There's a race car. What? Um, a race car. And let's see what else. There's a whole bunch of business cards and other boring things. Oh, there's an imaginary paintbrush. Did you know you can paint many pictures with this, merely with a glass of water, and then it disappears? Um, let's see what else is in here. Oh, we have some very boring glasses. Uh, oh, look, there's a little friend. In case you're scared by yourself, you might need a friend. She can come with you. Do you know why I have all of these things in my backpack? You don't? You have no idea why the car's in there. Has anybody ever been maybe on an airplane or maybe at a restaurant? Were you very bored at any point and thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't think I can be still anymore? Did anybody ever have? Yes. As a few of you. 
Well, that's why Miss Cresita has all these things in my purse because sometimes I get to sit next to you and I get to pull out some crayons and we can color. But really, it's not about the crayons or the journal or the glue or the water bottle. That's not what it's about. Do you know what really all those things are? They're treasure that the gospel just talks about. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The things we find important. And do you know what I find important? You. Maybe more than anything else, you. And I want to make sure I'm ready. So I want you to open your backpacks. I have some special things to go in it. Yeah. You ready? I need it to be open. You can open whichever pocket you want it to go in. I have a lot of pockets. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Why, would you, why would you actually have a car in there? Because you might need a race car to go across the restaurant table. This happens. Okay, ready? Everybody got it open? Let me see your backpack. Here. I'm putting a little bit of patience in yours. Oh, there's some kindness in yours. Woo. You may have to lean yours towards your one of us is bigger. This is bravery because sometimes school is scary. Can you show me yours? Oh, that is joy. Just in case the first day is hard, you'll have some. Do you know what yours is? Sharing in case somebody needs something you have. What, what should go in yours? <gasps> you know what I think should go in there? More joy because I've watched you share it with a lot of people. You want to put your hands out, Lauren, and I'll put yours in yours. Yours is extra love in case somebody doesn't have enough. Friends, that's what goes in our backpacks. These tags, they remind you, you have what you need in your backpack. And it's not your crayons or your colored pencils. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if you run out, come back to me on Sunday and I'll give you some more, okay? Will you pray with me? With your hands together. And your head bowed, your eyes closed. Dear God, thanks for giving me treasure. Help me remember to share it. Thanks for making me full of fruits of the Spirit. Thanks for teachers and school and school supplies. Thanks for Jesus. Amen. Okay, carry your heavy backpacks back. They're full of things, so be careful carrying them. Oh, don't worry. They're good. Okay. <laughs> Lest you wonder, uh, not those exact things are always in her backpack, but something like that, there's almost always several things. Sometimes the flights are long. Most of us, and most of the people I run into uh, limit the world to what we can see, touch, measure, explain. When we talk about the world, we talk about stuff. I mean, just when you look around this room, uh, there's a lot of stuff in this room. And the stuff is meaningful, the stuff, but the stuff points to something else, and that's what gives it value. But sometimes people get focused on the stuff and they miss the message behind it. They miss the value that it points to. Our appointed reading from the epistles comes to us from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 3 and then 8 through 16. 1 through 3 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand the world, that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things not seen, things invisible. Most of the people, not all of the people I know, but most of the people tend to relate to the world, tend to define the world, tend to live in the world that they can see, hold, touch, taste, measure, explain, and try to control. 
Thanks be to God for the inventors that are not limited by the reality of the science around them. Thanks be to God to the educators that see in children a potential that is not tangible. It is shaped by things you can see, hold, touch, and measure. And they're not always evenly distributed, are they? Some people may spend more energy worrying about if they're going to have a meal that evening or that day, that morning, and less time exploring the unknown. Thank God for artists that can put words together, that can put visions together, that can see things that are not limited by reality, by things you can see, hold, touch, taste, measure, and explain. In our congregations and many times in my own ministry, I wonder if sometimes I limit my expectations only to what I can see, hold, touch, measure, explain, and possibly control. If we limit ourselves to what we think, we have a surefire possibility of achieving, of meeting the expectations. Do we ever limit ourselves to only what we ourselves can accomplish and fail to realize or allow for the possibility of what we, with the power of the Holy Spirit and the help of each other, can do? Do we fail to think big? Or dream large? Are we afraid to engage in the missions of joining with Christ in the salvation of the world? Or are we comfortable just talking about how we're going to get the church parking lot paved this year, or are we going to put that off till next year and take care of the flooring? I don't know about you. I don't know if you limit yourself to that which is visible, measurable, achievable, or whether we, like the people in Hebrews, can walk by faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. Faith in Christ is very, very rarely the matter of arriving at that place that you imagined it being. That place that is fixed and final, that we can say is completed and done. Faith is more like what Abraham and Sarah saw. Faith is more about going out even though you don't yet have all of the details or the information or the evidence that you might want to have. And so you go anyway. Faith is walking with God, walking with others that may see things you don't see, of being on your way, getting up and getting going, even if the final destination is unseen and unknown because you believe it is in God's hands. So maybe I'm a little tired. 2,000 miles in the last couple of days. Moved our baby daughter to Mobile, Alabama. No, Montgomery, someplace up there. It's all the same to me. It's all there. Somebody else said that. It's all the same to me. It is hot and it is thick. It is sticky. We've moved her before. We've moved her as far away as Perth and Port Hedland, Australia. And that is in the middle of nowhere. And it was hard. 
She forgot her toothbrush. I had to take it to her later, but okay. We got that done. We met halfway in the northeast section of Alabama, of, <laughs> Alabama, of Australia. Why does she pick places that start with A? We've moved her before. We knew what it held. I knew where she was going. I knew how she was going to make a living. I had the contact information for the people she was going to be staying with. We moved her across town with roommates. We moved her off to college. I could see, hold, touch, measure, and explain all of that. But moving her to Montgomery, Alabama, to a boy I don't know very well, that's scary. But I know her. I know her. And even though I can't see, hold, touch, measure, or explain it, I know her, and she knows him, and she loves him, and I have faith in her, and she has faith in him. Walking with her, not because I believe she's going to get it perfect, not because I believe that they're not going to have disagreements or arguments, not because I, I believe they're never going to question if they're making the right decision, not because I know how this is going to end, but because I have faith in her. And she's going to be fine. And God is there. That's the important part. That God is there. And she has faith in God. And I have faith in God. And Christina has faith in God. And through that faith, God has faith in us. God has faith in us even though we don't know what it's going to be like. God has faith in us even though God knows we're not going to get it perfect. That we're going to have difficulties. We're going to have arguments. We're going to have disagreements. And we're going to even have disagreements with God. And we're going to say, God, I know what you're saying, but I just don't think that just doesn't make sense. I can't see, hold, touch it by the worldly values and standards that I have grown accustomed to. I don't think that's a good idea. And God says, yeah, but come on anyway. God has faith in us. So in chapter 12, Jesus is talking to us and to the disciples, and we hear all of Jesus' encouragements to set aside the material blessings of the world, to set aside those things that we can see, hold, touch, measure, explain, to set aside the stuff of the world. Maybe this series on treasures, on masters, on house owners is about not the stuff, but where our faith lies. And about being bound and focused on the right frame of reference or ultimate source of value. Where our faith lies. When Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where do you want to be? Where do we want to be? William Mons defines this as the seat of feeling. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That treasure, that seat of feeling, that impulse, that affection, that desire, that inner and mental frame. Jesus does not say that where your treasure is, there you will be also. Where do you long for? What do you yearn for? Jesus is talking to us, and Jesus is talking to those people in a very real world with persecution, with hardships, with difficulties. He does not seem to expect them to live somewhere else. That's the world we're in. 
but they and we are to feel and desire and to frame our entire existence as if we belong somewhere else. In the kingdom of God, in this world, but not of this world. And in this passage's final saying, in those last few lines, it is Jesus who is the thief who comes unannounced. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And this is the house that we are in these worldly, tangible things that we can see, hold, touch, measure, and sometimes explain. These temporary things, temporal things, transitory things. And we are invited to focus on eternal things. Most of you have read some of Henry Nouwen's stuff. He's, if you're not familiar, a wonderful teacher of, of the art of framing our lives into God's values. Henry Nouwen says, From the beginning of my life, two interior voices have been speaking to me. One saying, Henry, be sure you make it on your own. Be sure you become an independent person. Be sure I can be proud of you. And then there's another voice saying, Henry, whatever you're going to do, even if you don't do anything very interesting in the eyes of the world, be sure you stay close to the heart of God through Jesus Christ. Be sure you stay close to the love of God. Henry goes on to write, we are here for just a short time. For 20, 40, 60, or 80 years to discover and believe that you are a beloved child of God. Life is just a short opportunity for you during a few years to say to God, I love you too. I have faith in you. And you have faith in me. Maybe Nowen's words will help us learn to bind ourselves to the right source of value. Where do you want to be? But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Can we be too ready? Can we think we've got it figured out? That we no longer need to dream? No longer need to see beyond the reality of that which we can see, hold, touch, and measure, and explain? Can we say it's too hot, too cold, too high, too far, too close? That we fail to see the vision Most of you are aware, a little over a year ago, about a year ago, I had a wreck. I was too ready, too cocky, too confident. I mean, even as I was rolling over in my truck, I said, I can get out of this. I can straighten this out. I thought, I've driven so many years, I know what to do and how to do it. I can do this. I was bored. Anybody can drive down the road. I reached over to do something, dropped my attention for just a moment, just a moment. Do we ever get too ready, too comfortable, too sure of our own abilities and our own relationship with God? You know, the resurrection was a, a huge roadblock for early faith development. The issue with 
that God had with the Israelites in Isaiah that was referred to earlier wasn't the worship itself. It was that they had become too comfortable. They, they were too sure that their worship was right and the way their worship was performed, they failed to acknowledge God's presence or the recognition of their brokenness. They failed to realize that they needed God. They failed to realize that God needed them, that God calls to them to come clean. And the prophet Isaiah, cease to do evil, learn what is good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Can we ever be too ready? Too comfortable. Too confident that we know what it's going to look like. We know when Jesus is going to come. We know when the thief is going to come to break into the house. And we know what he's going to look like. And we are not going to miss it. Can we ever be too ready? So when we repent of our own worldly tendencies that often lead to violence in some form or fashion. We read about physical violence, but what about all the emotional violence or the violence done by words or actions and thoughts and deeds? When we acknowledge our own tendencies, when we admit the need to be transformed, to become people who can acknowledge the need of a shepherd, we begin to understand that God does not love us because we are lovable, but because we are lovable precisely because God loves us. God's love is what gives us our worth. That we have faith in God because God has faith in us. I want to close with this story. The young disciple in India who left home and traveled in search of a spiritual master. He found a spiritual master praying beside a river, and the young man begged this spiritual master to teach him. The spiritual master rose up very slowly and walked with the young man out into the river. Suddenly, the spiritual master grabbed the young man and dragged him under the water. A few seconds passed, and the young man just sat and relaxed, thinking there was a meaning to this, that there was meaning, touch, measurements. He could explain it. He understood it. Then a minute passed, and then another minute, and then the young man, realizing that he didn't quite understand, the young man began to struggle and kick, but still the teacher was strong enough to hold him down until at last the young man started to become limp and the master drug him up, coughing and gasping for air out of the water. The teacher looked at the young man and said, while you were under the water, what was it you wanted? While you were under the water, what was it you wanted? And when the young man was finally able to speak again, the man gasped, air. And how badly did you want it? All. It was all I wanted in the world. With my whole soul, all I wanted was air. Good, said the teacher. When you long for God in the same way that you have just now longed for air, come back to me and we will begin your discipleship. Where? Do you want to be? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we come to our communion table. This is Christ's table. It is not my table. Everyone is invited. Everyone is welcome. And so let us join together in giving thanks to God with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Then let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You showed your people that if they were willing and obedient, their transgressions would not be held against them. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He taught that your kingdom might come at any moment like a thief in the night. So we must be alert at all times. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For by faith, marvelous things happen through your grace. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we, though we are many, are of one body. For the bread which we break is a means of sharing in the body of Christ. In the cup over which we give thanks, we have faith that it is a means of sharing in the blood of Christ. Not because we can see it, not because we can measure it, not because we explain it, but because God said, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And we said, thanks be to God. If you're helping with the distribution, I invite you to come forward now. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take and drink this. Remember the Christ body and blood given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take, drink, and be comforted. Amen. The table is set. The invitation is extended. The ushers will invite you to come forward. You may stand or kneel at the communion rail, whichever is more comfortable for you. At the, after everyone has received, there will be a dismissal from the table.
Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Arise and go forth in peace. Amen. Just a reminder, we also have the gluten-free wafers. If you ask for one or they're on the baptismal font there, we also have cups that you can take with you if you want to be a home communion steward to take home with you. Just see me after the worship service. So the scriptures say, Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Arise and go forth as citizens of the world where no thief comes near and no moth comes and nothing wears out. Go forth in peace. Amen. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet 
so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Jesus knocks. Arise, go forth. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Arise, go forth from this place in the knowledge that you are indeed ready. God has faith in you, so you can have faith in God. Go forth in peace. Amen. Anyone need a few more minutes before they come to receive, or is there someone sitting next to you that we may have missed when we looked around? Remember, if there's somebody on your way home, maybe somebody in your home that you would like to take communion to, we have the ones that are very easy to take with you. They've been blessed. Just think about them. Maybe they'll turn you down this time, but this might be the one time that they say, yeah, I'd like that. It's available. It's welcome. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Please join with me in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you would like to make this your church home, perhaps transferring from an existing faith community, or maybe you've never entered into that formal profession of faith and confession that you want to be part of a community and you see the value of being a part of a community. I invite you to fill out the card in front of you, the little green card, the brown card, and then you can bring it forward. I'll introduce you appropriately um, as we stand and sing our closing hymn of invitation. Forth in thy name, O Lord, is number 438. <laughs>
looking around. I don't see Kristen. I, I, I apologize. I forgot what service she normally goes to because she traditionally watches online. She works on Sundays, but once about once a month, she's able to be here. So last week she came up and joined the church, but I don't remember which service. So anyway, when you meet her, remember that's who she is. <laughs> and if you're watching online, Kristen, God's peace be with you. We welcome you and love you as part of this congregation. And now may the grace of God that thankfully passes all of our ability to measure, to hold, to touch, to explain. May that grace go with you. And the communion of all the saints and the power of the Holy Spirit go forth in peace. Amen.